Lately, I've been 3D printing airless basketballs with flexible PLA, and I've had pretty good results with the bounce, but the problem is the durability just doesn't seem to hold up in the long run. So I wanted to know if I anneal flex PLA, if I can improve the strength of these flexible PLA basketballs. I'm also designing an airless basketball file, so I wanted to test both of my final designs that I came up with. As you can see, it took me many tries and failed attempts, but I finally came down to two final designs, and we're going to test them both and see if annealing can strengthen them. Just for those who don't know, annealing is putting the 3D prints in the oven for a set temperature and time to improve the durability and strength. I started by printing each of my final designs in flexible PLA, and then from there I had to begin the tedious process of removing the supports, but they did come off eventually after some time and effort. After the supports were removed from each of the basketballs, I then had to sand the bottom of the basketballs down where I removed the supports to make sure that all the support material was gone and that there weren't any weird bumps that would mess with the bounce of the basketballs. Next, I had to prepare each basketball for annealing by putting it in a metal bucket and then covering the basketball completely with sand. The reason I cover the basketball completely in sand is it's pretty common during annealing for 3D prints to warp or deform because of the annealing heat process. So by covering it completely with sand, this will help prevent any sort of warping or deformity that might happen while it's annealing. After completely covering the ball in sand, I had to make sure to toss the bucket around and just make sure that sand gets in all the little nooks and crannies and then cover the basketball completely to make sure that it will prevent any warping or deformities. Then I had to repeat the same process for the orange basketball. It was really completely the same, just had to pour the sand on top and then move the sand back and forth to get in all the nooks and crannies, cover it up completely, and then I had to put both of them in the oven. I put each basketball in the oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit or about 90 degrees Celsius for about four hours. And then when all was said and done, this is what they looked like. And of course, like usual, before we do any sort of bounce testing, I wanted to weigh both of them. The brown basketball weighed about 537 grams and the orange basketball came in at about 534 grams. I started the bounce testing with the brown basketball, which was my first design, and I gotta say it felt a little clunky when I was bouncing it around. It seemed to bounce really well, definitely better than any of the single lattice balls I printed with the Flex PLA, but it still felt a little clunky, and I hoped that the orange basketball was gonna result in a better bounce than this. Next was to test the durability, so what I ended up doing was, like my previous videos, I put it through a 500 dribble bounce test, and I'm surprised because it actually survived all 500 dribbles, which is by far way more bounces and dribbles than I have ever been able to get out of any of the other Flex PLA basketballs that I have printed. Next was the bounce testing for the orange basketball, which was my second final design, and immediately I felt a big difference in the bounce. It definitely bounced better and just felt less clunky than the orange basketball. So of course I followed it up with a 500 dribble bounce test, just like the brown one, and it survived all 500 bounce dribble tests that I put it through as well. But it seems like the bounce on this file seems to be quite a bit better, so that's definitely something I'm gonna note moving forward. Like my previous durability tests, I was also trying to slam the basketballs on the ground to try and get them to break on purpose, and both of them survived this as well, so I gotta say, so far this is pretty promising results. Alright, well after all the testing was done, both of the basketballs and designs have successfully survived the durability tests and bounce and dribble tests that I put them through, which is actually very impressive. Like I've mentioned before, I've printed quite a few airless basketballs out of this Ataraxia Flex PLA now, and I gotta say, none of them have survived any sort of durability test, and this black basketball that I'm holding now is even the same file as the brown basketball that I tried before without annealing, so from what I can tell, the annealing seems to have some fairly successful results. Even with this testing aside that seems to have promising results, if you look at the makeup of the flexible PLA that Ataraxia makes on their description page, it says that it's primarily made out of polylactic acid, which is really just PLA filament, and PLA has had lots of tests and research projects that have shown the benefits of annealing for both strength and durability, so I believe that annealing the flex PLA is really just going to help it. 
Of course, more testing can and should be done as far as annealing Flex PLA goes. So maybe I can do more of that in the future if anybody's interested. And as far as my file design, I am finalizing the actual design of the file and making sure that the weight and diameter of the basketball matches what an NBA ball would kind of look like. When the basketball file is ready to go, I'll make sure it's available for other people to try. And I'll also be trying this basketball file with lots of other filaments here in the near future. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of those future videos. And I will see you in the next one.